Have you ever wondered how data travels over the internet? Well, you might think that when you send someone an email, photo, or video, you're probably thinking that it's all sent in one piece. Well, the reality is, it's not. The internet uses what's called the TCP IP protocol, which is just a set of rules on how data is transferred over the internet. And in a TCP IP network, the data is not sent in one piece. Instead, the data is first broken down into smaller chunks and then they are sent. And these small chunks are called data packets. And as each data packet is sent, they will independently travel across the internet through various devices and networks and arrive at the destination. So the next question is, well, why does the internet use data packets? Why not just send all the data together? Well, the reason for using data packets is to make the internet run smoother and more efficient. So for example, let's say that the internet didn't use data packets, and instead it sent all the data together in a long uninterrupted stream of bits. And in order for the data to be read, those bits would have to be sent in the correct order. This method is what's called circuit switching. Well, the problem with this is that during the transmission of the data, no other computers will be able to use those lines until the transmission is complete. So they would have to wait their turn. And when you have billions of computers on the internet having to wait to send data, this would dramatically slow things down. But if you were to break down that data into smaller chunks or packets, with each packet having everything it needs, such as the destination address and the knowledge on how to get to their destination, each of them would independently find their way and choose the best route to the destination without relying on any other data or a fixed path. So there would be no waiting involved because the packets are fully independent. And they also don't have to arrive in the correct order because each packet has a sequence number, such as 1 of 20, 2 of 20, and so on. So when they arrive at the destination, the receiving device reads the sequence numbers and puts the data in the correct order. This is what's known as packet switching. Hey guys, if you're watching my videos, you're obviously interested in learning. That's why I want to tell you about Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning center where you can learn and master concepts in as little as 15 minutes per day. With thousands of lessons to choose from, their interactive lessons make concepts feel intuitive so even complex ideas are easy to understand. And their real-time feedback and simple explanations make learning efficient. Whether you're a complete beginner or you're ready to dive into machine learning and beyond, Brilliant makes it easy to level up fast with fun, bite-sized lessons, whether you're into engineering, computer science, data analysis, or even math. And right now, you can try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by going to brilliant.org forward slash powersert or click the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen and you also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So if we look at the structure of a data packet, it will typically have three sections, a header, payload, and a trailer. The header contains the source and destination IP addresses. This tells the packet where it came from and where it's going. It also contains port and sequence numbers. The payload contains the actual data, and the trailer contains data that informs the destination that it has reached the end of the transmission and it checks for any errors. So for example, let's say that we're sending this photo to someone over the internet, whether it's using email or some other application. And let's say that the photo will be broken down into 20 smaller chunks using 20 data packets with each packet carrying one chunk each. Then each packet will be assigned an IP address that tells it where it's going. It will also contain sequence numbers such as 1 of 20, 2 of 20, 3 of 20, and so on along with a trailer. And then each packet will be sent over the internet, choosing various pathways, making their way to the destination. And each data packet is independent of the other because they all have the information that they need to make their trip. And as they all arrive at the destination, the receiving computer will put the pieces back in the original form based on the sequence numbers so that the photo can be read properly and then the data will be checked for errors. 
Now keep in mind, in this demonstration, this photo is broken down using 20 data packets. And I'm doing that just to demonstrate how this works. But realistically, a typical photo would be broken down into hundreds or even thousands of data packets, depending on the size of the photo. So in a nutshell, this is how data packets work. So guys, I want to thank you for watching this video on data packets. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next video.